Hello, and welcome to the PowerStore initial configuration video for PowerStore OS 2.0. In this video, we will be talking about the initial configuration of a PowerStore system. We will cover a few topics in this video. First, we will start off with an overview about the initial configuration process. Then, review the requirements for both the PowerStore T and PowerStore X models, and finally conclude with a demo of the initial configuration wizard. Additional resources will be listed at the end of this video. What is initial configuration in PowerStore? Initial configuration takes the PowerStore system or systems from a factory state to an operational state specific to the customer environment. It is the first step that the user needs to do once their network configuration is complete to bring the system online. A dedicated initial configuration wizard walks the user through this configuration process. The initial configuration wizard will allow the user to configure their cluster. Depending on the type of cluster the user wants to deploy, the user needs to provide certain information. When going through the initial configuration for PowerStore T, the user must select which storage configuration they prefer. The user can select either Unified, which provides the traditional SAN and NAS capabilities, or Block Optimized, which only provides SAN capabilities. If the user is not sure, or believes they may use file services at some time, the recommendation is to select Unified. The PowerStore X model requires a pre-existing vCenter in order to complete the initial configuration. Make sure you have the vCenter information on hand. The vCenter should be version 6.7 or higher, and PowerStore X requires either a vSphere Enterprise Plus or vSphere Remote Office Branch Office license. Starting in PowerStore OS 2.0, the initial configuration is also supported via REST API and CLI. This table shows the required information that an administrator needs to complete the initial configuration wizard for a PowerStore T and PowerStore X model appliance. Note that starting in PowerStore OS 2.0, the storage network has been removed entirely from the initial configuration wizard for PowerStore T. PowerStore T model appliance can be configured with only the management network, and the storage network is configured at a later time if needed. Let's now take a look at the demo for how an administrator can configure a PowerStore system. In this demonstration, we will show the initial configuration process for a PowerStore X. The PowerStore T only requires the first few steps in the beginning, and the differences between the two models will be called out. After discovering the system, the user will log in. The default username is admin, and the password is password123 pound. Click Login. The initial configuration starts with the end user license agreement. Make sure you read the license agreement and then check the box, I accept this agreement, and then click Accept. In the Cluster Details section, the user has to give a name to the cluster. For a PowerStore T appliance, the user will also select the deployment mode here, either unified or block optimized. Additional appliances of the same type either X or T, can be selected here. Before you start the initial configuration, a change password is required. Input the default password and the new password. Service password can also be changed if needed. Click Update to start the initial configuration. Next, the user will select the tolerance level for the appliance either single or double drive failure. We will keep the default and click Next. The first network section is the management network. Fill out the VLAN ID, NetMask, Gateway, Cluster IP, and specify any additional required management IPs. A single PowerStore T appliance requires four total management IPs, including the cluster IP, and a single PowerStore X appliance requires six total management IPs. For a PowerStore T appliance, these are the only IPs that will be assigned during the initial configuration wizard. For the PowerStore X, we will also configure the storage and vMotion network. We will go ahead and enter the required information for the storage and vMotion networks. In the infrastructure services, one DNS and one NTP are required. The physical switches is optional and provides enhanced network validation with Dell switches. In this example, we will skip this part. 
Both PowerStore T and PowerStore X appliances require the infrastructure services section to be completed. Click Next. Next is the hypervisor section. This is where the vCenter information is entered and the PowerStore credentials are specified to register the VASA provider. If it is a PowerStore X, the data center and ESX cluster name are also provided. This section is required for PowerStore X and optional for PowerStore T. There are a few things to note in the cluster creation section. This page provides copy link to access the PowerStore Manager GUI once the cluster is configured. Also, there is a view full details link. This provides all the information the user provided during the initial configuration. It is highly recommended to go through this list and make sure everything looks correct. Finally, there's export configuration details. This can be used to save your configuration. It is exported in a JSON file format. At this point, click Validate. Validate and make sure that the IPs you provided, DNS and NTP IPs, are all valid. Once the validation is complete and there are no critical alerts, you can click Configure. Once you click Configure, a bar is shown to indicate the system is being configured. Once completed, it will show a green mark. If you are configuring a unified PowerStore T appliance, the NAS services will be installed automatically after the cluster configuration completes. After this finishes, or directly after cluster creation with any other appliance type finishes, you will be prompted to log into the appliance using the cluster IP. After logging in, you will be directed to complete a couple optional steps. On a PowerStore X cluster, there is an optimization section. This section is new in PowerStore OS 2.0 and requests additional IP addresses for PowerStore 3000X to 9000X models and an MTU change to modify the configuration of the appliance and enhance the potential performance. Since this is a PowerStore 1000X, only the MTU change is shown here. This is highly recommended to complete. In this demo environment, jumbo frames are not enabled, so we will skip this step. After this, both PowerStore X and PowerStore T appliances will be prompted to configure Support Assist. For this demonstration, we will skip this. At this point, you have successfully configured your PowerStore cluster. Thank you for watching this video. For additional resources, please check the white papers and visit the link dell.com slash storage resources and dell.com slash power store docs.